are some things that I really, really wish I would have known before I started to learn to play the piano. And I know a lot of the students I've seen over the years have felt the same way because learning the piano is an amazing experience. It can be fun, it can be exciting, but there are also challenges. And I think it's super important as beginners to know kind of what to expect, to know you're not alone in your struggles. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the five things I wish I had known before I started playing the piano. The first thing I wish I knew was how disconnected my brain would feel from my hands at the beginning. I had no idea. Um, you know, you know the thing to do and your brain understands, but you're telling your hands and your hands aren't listening and it can feel really overwhelming. You could question yourself, your sanity, your ability to learn new things. And I just need to say that is so very normal and I would be surprised if every single person who ever set out to learn to play the piano didn't struggle with feeling like their brains and their hands were somehow disconnected. So I wanna show you an example of this. I'm gonna go grab a friend from the office um, that is not a piano player. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you what happens when you're a new piano player and you go to try a new skill. All right, so let's go grab Christy and we'll see what happens back here at the piano. So I would like to prove a point. Okay. Um, so I know that you haven't really played the piano. Nope. Okay. Um, so I wanted to show all of our friends um, how challenging it can feel to be a beginner. Okay. So I want to kind of prove a little point. So I was wondering if you'd be willing to come to the piano. Sure, let's do it. What? I can look totally silly. I love it. <laughs> Yay! Um, so you've you've like like when you were a kid, you've played once or twice. I think that's my understanding. Yeah, so I tried to play piano because my brother plays really, really well. So I looked at his piano books and then I thought I could do the same thing. Uh -huh. And I think I reckon I lasted like five minutes. Five minutes, okay. And then, yeah, I gave up because I'm like, this is really hard. <laughs> it is really hard, especially at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, oh so one of the hardest things for new piano players is playing a C scale. Okay. And it looks really simple, mm -hmm. um, but it's really difficult. So I wanted to just show everyone. So when I sit down, I look at the piano, I know mm -hmm. this is C right here, and a C scale does this. Doesn't, doesn't seem too crazy, does it? No. No. Okay, so I want you to do it with your right hand first. Okay. And it might, might, might not be too bad with the right hand. You're gonna start on this one. Yeah. You're gonna go one, two, three, and you're tucking your thumb under. Yep, what? good. And re yeah, good, good, keep going. <laughs> Okay, awesome, good, stop there. Okay. Okay, now do it with your left hand. Where? Right here, okay. and you're gonna start with this <laughs> finger, and yep. you're gonna use all of them up. Okay. And then your third finger comes up and over. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't so hard, right? Okay, that's okay. Okay, now do it with both hands at the same time. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, all right. This is weird. Okay. Okay, now this one tucks. Your thumb under. It was too, it's just too late. <laughs> so you go one, two, three, tuck. I want to tuck this guy though. I know. <laughs> this is the point okay. that we're making. Okay. Okay. Good job. Yeah. You can do it. Okay, what you did there is you skipped your two finger entirely. You just didn't play it, you just kept it out of the game. <laughs> can I just play with two fingers? No. <laughs> Making. It's simple. You can do it with this hand and you can do yeah. it with that hand, but when you put it together, it's like your brain and your hands are no longer yeah. connected. It's horrible. Yeah, how do, how do you feel? I'm embarrassed. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm laughing at you. Not because I'm laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. <laughs> totally. Um, totally. Because I just want everybody to know, like, this is normal. This is exactly how it's supposed to go. Christy is She's pretty competitive. Yeah. So she's probably yeah. gonna practice this and then master it, but it's gonna take her a little while and the point is that this is okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we're gonna do is talk a little bit about what's actually happening in your brain when you're learning to do something new. So let's chat for just a moment about what is actually happening in your brain when you go to learn something new. Now, I am not a neuroscientist, but I have spent some time studying the process of learning and what I learned while I was learning about learning was that when you go to develop a new skill, you literally have to create a new pathway for that in your brain. So imagine a mountain and you want to climb that mountain, but there's no trail. So you got to go 
and make a trail. Now the first time you make this trail attempt, you might get a little ways, but you are gonna get tired because you're gonna be bushwhacking and trailblazing and you can't do it all one day. So you go home and then the next day you go and you get a little bit further and a little bit further until eventually you've got to trail all the way to the top of that mountain. Now, imagine how well worn that trail will be and how much faster you'll be able to get from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain because you've done it a million times before. Same thing's true with learning the piano. Yeah, the first time you go to try to play your C-scale hands together, it might feel like a bit of a train wreck. But every time you go back to do it again, you're gonna get a little bit further, you're gonna create a be better pathway in your brain. That information is going to be moving a little bit more efficiently each time you practice it, till eventually you're not gonna have to think about it at all. Your hands will just know what to do. The next thing I wish I had known when I started learning the piano was how important it was to spend time getting really, really comfortable with the layout of the keyboard. Understanding where all the Fs were, where all the Gs were, how to move my hands from you know C position to F position. Knowing that, taking the time with that particular skill would have helped me move so much more quickly in the long run because I wouldn't have been always trying to not only get my brain to cooperate with my hands, like we saw earlier with Christy, but also um, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have to be like, okay, well, where's F? There's too many things going on. So what you need to do is take your time to learn your musical alphabet. Seems kind of basic, right? Like we learn our ABCs when we're really, really little. But the musical alphabet goes from A to G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats. Again, A, B, and it just goes on and on. So now, you can get so much better at playing the piano faster if you learn your musical alphabet both forwards and backwards. So there's the, there's the trick. You should be able to move through your musical alphabet backwards. And it's, it's a lot easier said than done. So if I say F, you should be able to figure out what the note two notes before F is. So in your mind, you're counting back F, E, D that quickly. Um, if I say C, you should be able to figure out what note is four below that really, really quickly by counting backwards in your alphabet. So C, B, A, G. So this is why practicing your musical alphabet forward and backward is going to help you out so much. The other thing is you have to apply that information to the actual keyboard. And so you can use landmarks. This could be really helpful. Um, groups of two have a C at the bottom and then D is in the middle of the group of two, and then E is at the top of the group of two. So if you use that to kind of help you visualize everything, you could go through the piano keyboard and be like, okay, C, C, C. You could even practice with hand position, five finger of left hand with thumb of right hand, C position, C position, right? Getting used to putting your hands into that shape. Um, then you could look at your group of three black keys like this, and you could know that the bottom of that is F. Your alphabet will take you to G, to A, to B, and then back to C. So spend time with this. Make, make a game out of it. Every time you sit down on the piano, practice finding different notes and locations on the keyboard. Whether it's one at a time going through like find all the Fs, find all the Gs, or you take your hands and move them through different positions forward and backwards, it's going to help you so much. Now I even have created this really fun little keyboard printout that you can use, um, that you can draw the note names onto or color each key a different color if you want to. It's just another way to reinforce the layout of the keyboard. It really, really, really will make you so much better in the long run when you're not having to stop and think about where your hands should go along with all of the other things you're trying to do. So the next thing that I wish I had known before I started playing the piano was just how easy it was to play songs that I actually wanted to play. I'm not talking about on top of old Smokey or Alpine Melody. I'm trying to think of my old piano books. I hated those songs. I didn't want to learn them. Um, so one of the first things that I teach my students now in their very first lessons is how to read a chord chart and play a chord because you are not going to believe how easy it is. So I'm going to head to the uh, internet here <laughs> I'm going to pull up chord chart. I'm just going to type in Google chords for I'm yours by Jason Mraz. I found a chord chart. Boom. There it is. And so I see lyrics and I see chord names above them. So if you see C, you find C and you play it. Um, so I'm going to match with my left hand. Oh, my handy desk piano here. The go keys, thank you. Um, and I'm just gonna play with my thumb, the note that matches, and then five notes up. And I move my hand around that way. So if it says C, I do this. If it says G, I move my thumb, and I find G, and I do the same exact thing. And then I can just sing along. 
I'm well, you done done me, and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back. And then once you get a little more confident, you can play full chords with all three notes. You got some rhythm. Well, you done done me, and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back. And honestly, that's something that most people can do in their very first lesson in some form, even just very basically. And if you can do that the first time you sit down at the piano, imagine what you can do after two years or three years. Sky's the limit. Ow. Okay, so the next thing that I wish I would have known before I started learning to play the piano was how to practice. Now, I'm not talking about what to practice. I'm talking about how to practice. More specifically, the difference between playing and practicing. These are very different things. When you're playing something, you're just playing. You're just, you're just enjoying it. It's a wonderful thing to do. But when you're practicing, you're taking your time. You're going slow. You're picking the things apart. That's where the magic happens. So you can go and play a song 500 times and eventually you're gonna be pretty good at it. But if you don't take the time to practice, it's gonna become frustrating. If you actually slow down and practice that song, intentionally taking your time, repeating the areas that are difficult, your ability to master that piece is going to be so much more efficient. You'll do it faster, you'll do it better, and you'll be able to play with more confidence. Let's head on over to the piano and I will show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so playing somewhere over the rainbow, because that's what I'm working on right now, would sound like this. I'd sit down, I'd find the notes, but I'm gonna ignore it because I'm playing, not practicing right now. And I'm lost, but because I'm not practicing, I'm playing, I'm just gonna keep going. So that's kind of what playing would look like. I'm not really stopping when I have mistakes, I'm just having a good time, which is important. I really can't stress that enough. We all need to take time to play, but practice is also important. So if I were practicing this piece, I would do this. I would start with my right hand only. And I'd go slow. And I think about dynamics maybe, how all the notes are feeling under my hands fingers I'm using and then I'd stop and then I would just practice with my left hand two three for my count one two three four one two and I'm trying to make it as musical as possible one two three four and then I would put it hands together maybe even more slowly and I really think about what I was doing feel really natural? Maybe not. So I'm going to do that again. And this is the tedious part <laughs> because you're doing things over and over. Ah, notice how I had to stop and think there? So I'm going to back up a couple notes before where I had that pause. I might even take my pen, which I usually keep at the piano, and circle or draw a little arrow that I need to spend some extra time there. And then I'll go some more. It felt so much better that time. So that's what practice is. Practice is not performing, it's not playing, it's practice, it's slow, it's deliberate, it's methodical, it's taking the time, it's working out the details, it's not rushing. <laughs> so make sure that you are practicing your pieces and then reward yourself by allowing yourself to just play and enjoy them too. So the last thing I wish I would have known before I started learning to play the piano was to get a piano that I would love to play. If you have an instrument that you just can't wait to spend time with, it's going to really increase your chances of spending time with it and getting that good practice in. So go to a music store, your local music store, if you can, and play as many of them as possible. The most important thing is that you find an instrument that feels great under your fingers and sounds really good to your ears. I recommend you try to get at least 88 keys. Uh, 64 would be the minimum. You want 
want them touch sensitive and you want them weighted. There are lots of very affordable options. We've got a Roland FP10, I think is like 649 Canadian. Um, these are Williams Legato, they're under $400 Canadian. Um, and then, you know, this, they hit all kinds of price points. End of the day, pick something you love and you're going to spend time at the piano. If you want a little bit more information on how to pick out the perfect keyboard for you, you can find the link below to our video on how to pick the perfect beginner keyboard. Okay, so those are the five things I wish that I would have known before I started to play the piano. So the whole intention and heart behind this video was to help you feel like you're not alone, to help prepare you for the journey ahead so that you can, you know, go with the flow and you encounter hurdles and know and trust that the experience that you have um, is going to be amazing because it's going to eventually bring you towards your goal of playing songs that you love. So if there are any other, you know, things that as beginners you wish somebody had told you, comment below. So for the beginner piano players, you can share your struggles. For those of you that have been playing for a while and have some wisdom to share, comment below with that um, because that's what makes us an amazing community of piano players. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you around.